On this edition of the Best Docs Network, featuring Forest Park Medical Center, we'll meet otologist Dr. Bob Peters, family practitioner Dr. Richard Berlando, ENT Dr. Allison Weil, OB Gen Dr. Nicholas Lux. And hi again everyone, Jim Knox along with Candace Kruger and welcome to another edition of the Best Docs Network featuring Forest Park Medical Center and of course Candace, Forest Park Medical Center, one of the top medical centers in the entire Dallas-Fort Worth area. It certainly is Jim and Kelsey Wright is with our first Best Doctor who operates right here at beautiful Forest Park Medical Center. Thanks Candace. Many women suffer from pelvic pain and don't know what to do about it. Let's meet our first Forest Park Medical Center physician, OBGYN Dr. Nicholas Lux, who can tell us more. One of the most common problems that a lot of women do not know much about, or a lot of women haven't even heard of it, is a condition called polycystic ovary syndrome. Women who have irregular cycles, or they have a history of missing a lot of cycles, or they have overt pelvic pain, are often found to have this condition. Before I came to Dr. Lux, I um, was having a lot of irregular periods, and I couldn't even walk sometimes because my pains were just really, really bad. They were sharp, and just getting around, it was just really hard for me. Now in Marley's case, she came in about a year ago with symptoms that are very typical of PCO and that consisted of irregular cycles and pelvic pain. We did an exam, pelvic sonogram, turned out that she has polycystic ovaries and she also had some findings I thought might be typical of some other conditions that can cause pelvic pain such as endometriosis. So Dr. Lux sent me here and um, had the sonograms and then after I had the sonos and it showed that I did have the polycystic ovaries which was cysts around my ovaries. I had one big cyst but then I also had several different little ones too. Treatment of PCO and pelvic pain consists of a surgical option versus a conservative option. It depends on what your goals are, it depends on the severity of the symptoms. In her case, she was in pain and she wanted to do something about that. I went in the Thursday before and had the uh, pre-op and then after I had the pre-op done, um, they, they kind of told me, you know, how long I was going to be out of work and which is I was only out of work a week. I was there like probably an hour after the surgery in recovery and then I was able to go home that same day. If any woman is having um, pelvic pains, I highly recommend seeing Dr. Lux. Well, we uh, were married in 2005 and tried for a long three whole years to try and get pregnant, you know, and which wasn't working, it wasn't working. We came to Texas and uh, spent a year trying here under a doctor's care and eventually underwent a series of testing and determined that our chances of getting pregnant on our own were less than 8% over our entire lifetime. Jessica and Philip came to us a few years ago with the need to pursue IVF in vitro fertilization. They knew about our program, they knew about our success rates, but one of the uh, unique issues with Jessica and her husband were they did not want twins. <laughs> you know, they were a young couple, they knew the amount of work it takes to raise a family, and one of the goals for them was to achieve a singleton healthy pregnancy. He kind of walked us through, you know, what the steps would be, what each thing we would do, um, how we would go through it, and, and I think a lot of it was just um, a comfort, you know, I mean, it's a very emotional thing. We took them through uh, the process of IVF with the placement of a single embryo, 
and they had a very healthy boy. So you go through all of the procedure of all of the drugs and everything and the medications to try and prime your body for pregnancy and you do a retrieval where they take the egg out of your body and they fertilize it and then they inject it back into your body. That's transfer day and there's five days in between typically where the egg lives in a petri dish and they watch it grow and then they put it back into your body and at that point you either conceive or you don't conceive and then but you can't know for two weeks. Another year went by and they came back again and we did the same thing. They conceived again on the second cycle and uh, they have a healthy girl. I went to a gymboree class and they were talking about how you take pictures of your kids and I said well, you know I have a picture of my son at five days gestation. It's just a little blip in a petri dish. You know those are the pictures I cherish or those that you know we, we know that we have life at five days. There were two people in the class that day they were like oh, I have the same picture, you know, we did the same thing. It was just, you know, really comforting. At Dallas IVF, we're able to provide the full range of infertility treatments without the need for patients to travel outside the area. The goal of our practice is to have healthy pregnancies. I'm happy with our results and our process and our decisions. Van Stocks Network featuring Forest Park Medical Center. Forest Park Medical Center, extraordinary in every way. And now let's meet another amazing Forest Park Medical Center doctor. It's ENT Dr. Allison Weil. Very, very strong congestion in my nose. Could not breathe whatsoever. Started about five years ago, you know, I started taking nasal sprays. Back then it was more of a one or two day type of thing, maybe once a day to be able to catch some relief to breathe. And just as the years went by, it started getting, you know, progressively worse. Frequently individuals come in with their biggest complaint being that they just cannot breathe through their nose. Often they are addicted to some of the common over-the-counter nasal decongestant sprays, which is a bad thing. These patients often just, they use them several times throughout the day. And the problem with that is that uh, you somewhat become addicted to them in the sense that the more you use them, the more you need it. You can have a, a rebound congestion in the nasal linings and the passageways. So it can cause a big problem with just persistent nasal obstruction. We're gonna order a cat Eventually, you know, it got to the point where I was having rebound congestion from the nasal spray. So, which I didn't know about, my girlfriend had to warn me, you know, you gotta stop taking this stuff. And I was like, no, it's no big deal. It's just nasal spray. It shouldn't be, you know, any harm to you. But, you know, after getting, reading the, congestion and reading the uh, back of it and seeing that it was dangerous and it does cause rebound congestion, it says it right there on the label. So there's two different types of nasal sprays. There's the over-the-counter ones, which are typically the decongestant nasal sprays. Those should be only used for a short period of time. The ones that can be prescribed by a physician, such as the nasal steroid sprays or antihistamine sprays, can be used on a daily basis indefinitely. The nasal sprays that are prescribed by the physician are not addictive in the way that the over-the-counter ones are and do not cause that rebound congestion and the problems that some of the over-the-counter decongestant sprays do. People don't realize how precious being able to breathe is. And you know, with my job, I have to be able to sleep. And before Dr. Wow, I wasn't able to sleep maybe three, four hours a day and I was constantly up getting nasal spray trying to be able to catch some relief to breathe, but now, you know, basically nights full of sleep. I mean, it's great. Forest Park Medical Center prides themselves on being one of the top medical facilities in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. They also pride themselves on being a good neighbor because they are very active in the community. We're here in Dallas this week for the first ever Your Weight Matters inaugural convention. It is created by patients for patients. There's so many people on our board that have done such a great job putting together 37 speakers, uh, outstanding number of uh, really high quality speakers. We far exceeded our expectations for attendance. Um, we've had just one great experience after the other and to be able to end it with the Dallas Walk from Obesity really means a lot because that's um, something that the Obesity Action Coalition and the ASMBS Foundation have supported for years. Forest Park helped um, 
sponsor part of the event and, and we have several team members out here, both patients and staff members that are supporting and the walk from obesity and the whole idea is just to raise awareness about the disease of obesity and all of the treatment options up to and including surgery. Forest Park has a great team of nurse practitioners and staff nurses, OR nurses, our radiology techs, our physicians and we have a great team and we're out here supporting and raising awareness about treatment of obesity. I remember when I came from Mexico I was like size 34 size and through the years I went to size 52 and it was very very overweight and for the last uh, 18 years I, get, I was getting complicated with you know diabetes that was like three years ago and the doctor told me finally they you had to do something about your weight and that's when I decided to uh, uh, start doing the research and get a surgery because it, it, I, I tried everything everything out there you know I was doing exercise all the diets and everything but it was not working. For 18 months, I feel much, much better. I have, I have more energy. Now I just feel much better. Forest Park had their very first ever book fair for our staff. Decided that we would make all the proceeds from the, the book fair go to the Walk from Obesity. So we're actually donating the proceeds today to the Walk from Obesity. So I'm very excited and proud of our staff for supporting the organization that way. had a lot of bloating and pressure in my abdomen. Uh, uneasy to breathe, you know, what maybe you get scared about. I was looking at heart attack symptoms and went to the emergency room basically thinking I'm having a heart attack. They even tested me for everything on the heart attack scale and then we went to further discussion with the doctor at the emergency room. Had a non-functioning gallbladder, was functioning very low. And then ran the test and saw the gall gallstones were very large and immediately called Dr. Roshek and um, scheduled the time to visit with him that same day. Basically a gallbladder is something that stores the bile that your liver makes. Um, the bile that your liver makes is what helps digest fat after you eat your hamburger or your fries, whatever it may be. When you eat something later down the road and you have some extra bile stored up from a previous meal or something like that, your brain says, oh look, here comes some more fat. Your gallbladder starts squeezing and then more bile comes out. First meeting with Dr. Roshek, I actually sat down with him. We discuss the history, any uh, previous illnesses. He was very informative and very, I mean, what I loved about him is he listened and he didn't mind questions. He reassured me that the, the gallbladder needed to come out. There are two main reasons why your gallbladder can go bad. One is that you develop what's called gallstones. Gallstones are little, literally stones that form in your gallbladder. And unfortunately, these stones can end up traveling out of your gallbladder and going into the main duct. That's the classic thing that causes pain. The other thing that can cause pain is that your gallbladder just doesn't work anymore. It just burns out and it won't squeeze the bile that's stored in there. And actually, it hurts when that happens too. The actual surgery, he said, he told me that it would be laparoscopic. Recovery, he just said that um, after the surgery, I always constantly be walking, help, you know, the fear of blood clots, if you're just laying around, just get the exercise of soreness out. And that's exactly what I did. Once the gallbladder is gone, the main duct that carries the bile from the liver to the intestine will actually dilate slightly. And the duct will become the new gallbladder. When you have your gallbladder and it's not working, we tell patients not to eat foods with fat. We try to minimize your fat intake so that your gallbladder isn't squeezing so often, causing the pain. Once your gallbladder's out, I tell patients you can eat whatever you want. Dr. Roshek is top notch. He's excited about learning and taking care of people. And now it's time to sit down and get to know one of Forest Park Medical Center's best physicians and founders, craniofacial surgeon, Dr. David Jenikov. We're joined now by one of Forest Park Medical Center's founders and craniofacial plastic surgeon, Dr. David Jenico. Dr. Jenico, thanks for being with us today. You're welcome. If you would start off by just talking to us a little bit about what brought you to practice medicine and specifically craniofacial plastic surgery. I grew up in Dallas and my father uh, was an orthodontist here in Dallas and he became part of the first craniofacial program down at UT. Uh, Southwestern or Children's Medical Center in the late 60s, early 1970s with uh, a physician named Ken Salyer. And so early on, I would see what my father did on the orthodontic side and still get to see what Ken did on the craniofacial side. 
and the transformations that the two of those guys did in the lives of children and their families I thought was extraordinary. I've always wanted to do craniofacial surgery. It's really the only reason I went into medicine, to be honest, uh, was to be able to take care of these kids. Wow, and talk to us about, about what is the most rewarding aspect of your job. I enjoy taking care of patients from when they're small to when they're almost 18 years of age. I get to take care of kids almost for as long or longer than some pediatricians. Additionally, families move, but most of my patients, the vast majority of them, come back to see me on a yearly basis. So I get to, to watch them grow and see them uh, mature over time, and I really enjoy that. The other uh, thing I probably enjoy as much as anything else is the ability to take a child who is otherwise has low self-esteem or the environment looks on them differently and if there's something that we can fix or enhance or improve we do that and the the change it makes in that child both physically mentally uh, and with their self-esteem to me is is life-changing for me and that's that's the main reason why I do it that's wonderful you've been an integral part of the development of Forest Park Medical Center talk to us a little bit about how you came to the vision of Forest Park the National Health Service model in this country is beginning to be pulled through the large institutions. So, in other words, um, the big institutions are beginning to control their entire referral networks by buying practices and employing physicians. And so, I didn't want to be part of that employed service model for a whole bunch of different reasons, not least of which I feel it would interrupt the relationship that I have with my patients. And so if I'm employed by a hospital system, they have the right to tell me what to do and when to do it, and that's not what I wanted to do. Well, thank you so much for your time, Dr. Genikov. My pleasure. And now we'll watch another Forest Park physician help change someone's life. Well, I woke up one day in early July, about three years ago, and had a small lump on my neck that I thought was an ingrown hair or something like that. But it continued to get bigger and bigger over the next several weeks. And that prompted me to see my regular doctor. So I ended up seeing an ENT, which uh, he ran some tests. A week later, he diagnosed the cancer. I decided I need a second opinion and I ended up in Dr. Andy Chung's office. We sat down, I kind of discussed with him what I believe was going on. He had already had a needle biopsy of the neck mass, which confirmed that it was a metastatic uh, malignancy called a squamous cell carcinoma. And uh, he asked me what options he had, uh, aside from getting radiation and chemotherapy, which he was very concerned about. Hearing the word cancer is, a, is something you only think happens on TV or to someone in the paper, but when it happens to you, it is pretty scary. I talked to him about a minimally invasive surgical option where I described how we could go in and remove the cancer in the back of his tongue, literally with no incisions. The tumor on my tongue was fairly large, and when I saw a picture of it, it looked like a great big mushroom cap way back in the back. You can see this is the lymph node on the left neck that Mr. McNeff noticed. After surgery, we repeated this scan, and what you see now is that this bright orange mass that was in the back of his tongue is no longer there. So you can see that that tumor is completely gone based on the PET CT. It seemed like I recovered pretty much from the surgery uh, in a matter of days. The worst part of this whole procedure was the, was the radiation treatment. Our goal is to preserve speech, respiration, and swallowing. And I think because of that and that preservation, patients are recovering quicker and uh, the, the potential complications are significantly reduced. As always, for more information on Forest Park Medical Centers or any of the amazing doctors you've seen on today's show, just log on to our website at bestdocsnetwork.com and click on Forest Park. I guess where we're heading next. How about Kelsey Reich, who has our next Best Doctor out of Forest Park Medical Center? Thanks, Jim. 
Being able to provide the gift of hearing to a child is a wonderful thing. And our next Forest Park Medical Center physician, otologist Dr. Bob Peters, was able to do just that. After Kimper was born, um, he had a, a newborn hearing test at the hospital. So we were taken to several other doctors to find out more about his hearing and hearing loss. We'd heard about getting cochlear implants and had done some research on them, and that's kind of the road we decided that we wanted to take. A cochlear implant is truly a bionic ear. It is the only available full replacement for a human special sensory function. When he was born, we found out um, in the hospital before we even left, you know, it kind of took the, the joy and excitement out of having a baby. You know, all of a sudden told that there may be a potential problem with your son. Because, you know, nobody wants to find out that something is, you know, wrong with their child, especially our first child. It's a day surgery type procedure, typically. Maybe small children and babies would spend the night. But this surgery takes no more than about an hour and a half to two hours to do. That portion is allowed to heal and then a very specialized computer is used on the outside called the processor. And that processor takes all the sound in the environment, digitizes it, and sends it to the implant via an FM signal. And when they first turn him on, he'd never ever heard sound. So um, they start him off very quietly and slow, so not to scare him, you know, because it's a whole new world to him. In the second, that we had our first appointment with Dr. Peters, he said, uh, okay, you know, my staff will take care of everything, and they did. In the case of Kemper, uh, who was identified early and whose parents wanted to be very proactive, very aggressive, and doing everything they could for him, uh, they presented early on so that by the time um, I saw them and that we had completed all of the evaluations at nine months, not only was he ready for an implant, but I felt he was old enough and he had grown enough that we could do both ears at the same time. It really has changed his life. He turned into a different baby. He was just a lot happier, and it's just like his, his whole world kind of opened up. But yeah, we, we think very highly of, of Dr. Peters. <laughs> Forest Park Medical Center has helped change a number of individuals' lives, as well as their physicians, like our next doctor, Dr. Richard Berlando. Milton had presented uh, to us with uh, some rather severe arm swelling. Like typical guy, I thought that it was just due to lifting some weights. Upon closer exam, the swelling was really not consistent with that, and we had to consult a, a vascular specialist real quick in order to kind of keep him out of trouble from uh, preventing a blood clot developing in there, and it could have been uh, some severe arm damage result had we not gone to that quite quickly. About four years ago, I noticed I had some swelling in my left arm around the elbow, and uh, didn't think anything about it, and uh, a couple of days later, I just had to go and you know go to the doctor to get it checked out. Anything that's uh, unusual, get it checked, especially if you're after age 40, uh, so we can make a diagnosis. I had a problem of it's called thoracic outlet syndrome, and basically what that is is, is there's one that's called um, neurogenic that involves the nerves, and it's one that um, involves the blood vessels. And mine happened to be involved in the blood vessels. Most people have 12 ribs. I'm one of the few to have 13 ribs. And so that, uh, that first rib was, uh, was pinching off one of my vessels, causing the blood to back up into my arm. With guys, you really have to keep on them uh, to, to sell that point that, hey, you know, some of this can have drastic consequences. Dr. Berlando, he had me to go see a specialist about it, and I ended up having to have surgery. Uh, and then, of course, I had to go back to see Dr. Berlando because he likes to, to follow up with all of his patients like that once you've been uh, to somewhere else. He just wants to keep a, a track of what's all going on with you. That's how we usually start the evaluation. If anything does come up uh, on the exam, then we would arrange, of course, appropriate follow-ups, making sure that the treatment plans do work. And like I say, if medications are needed, uh, monitoring you, watching you like a hawk to make sure that those medications don't have any uh, adverse consequences as well. After I've gone to see Dr. Blando, I feel good about uh, the direction my health is going. Uh, because I know that Dr. Blando has 
checked everything possible he needs to check with me. Best Stocks Network feature in Forest Park Medical Center. Welcome to the 21st century of cutting edge medicine, Forest Park Medical Center. Prior to coming to see Dr. Wyatt, I was constantly clogged my nose, constantly having to blow my nose. I was carrying toilet paper around with me constantly and was just miserable. I couldn't smell at all, I had a hard time tasting, and it really affected my lifestyle. Benna has been a patient of mine for a long time now, and she has uh, very serious problems with uh, sinus uh, infections, uh, sinus polyps, uh, allergies, and uh, associated problems with uh, asthma. I wanted to find out what was going on so I could breathe better and be functional. She has a lot of problems with chronic uh, sinusitis, uh, with the formation of a lot of polyps. It's driven by her allergic disease and uh, uh, underlying inflammation that uh, she has all the time. One of the big problems she has is something I see very commonly where sinus problems are making asthma worse. He explained to me that I had a lot of polyp development in my nose and that he needed to remove them so that way I could breathe better and that way everything would flow more clearly and I would be able to smell as well. So one of the things that happens to her when her sinuses start causing trouble is her asthma gets a lot worse. I would never be able to cure her, but I would be able to dramatically improve her quality of life by cutting down on the medicine she had to take all the time, improving her breathing through her nose, her sense of smell. Dr. Wyatt has changed my life in many ways. First of all, being able to smell my own perfume. Yeah, he's definitely changed my life. I can taste food again, I can make trips with my husband, and I can have a normal life. I love being able to smell flowers. And she's one of those people, unfortunately, that I have not been able to go in and cure with a single surgery. But because of the minimally invasive techniques uh, that I'm able to employ now, even though she requires surgery to clear out polyps uh, uh, every 18 months to two years or so, uh, she's able to get that done and tolerate that with very little downtime. He is a great doctor. I love that he explains things to me well. Um, he shows me things. He helps me out with new medications if I'm on them. He coordinates really well with other doctors. I just love Dr. Wyatt and his team. I would definitely recommend Dr. Wyatt. At Forest Park Frisco, we are uh, 14 ORs and two suites for endoscopy. They all have the latest equipment for our physicians in there. Technology is something we do very well. We certainly go out and research the latest equipment. We're able to respond to our physician needs for equipment very quickly. The team at Forest Park Dallas started planning for this about two years ago. All the different departments, all the equipment. So it's been a very collaborative between the two facilities. The things that make Forest Park unique are our focus on what's best for the patient and what's best for the physician. As a smaller organization, we have the opportunity to turn very quickly. If a physician has a need, a surgeon has a need, we can meet, we find a way to say yes. I like the idea that we could form something from the beginning and make it our own rather than fall into a mold that was already there. This was something we could develop ourselves. We feel that we raise the bar for healthcare. We're excited about what that can mean for the entire Metroplex as we continue to replicate that as we expand. We've seen that here in Dallas and it's happening in Frisco and we expect to see the same thing in South Lake and Fort Worth. Well, that'll do it, everyone. That'll wrap up another edition of the Best Docs Network featuring Forest Park Medical Centers, one of the best medical centers in all of Dallas-Fort Worth. And, of course, Candace, to find out more about Forest Park Medical Center or any of the great physicians that operate out of Forest Park Medical Center, head to the website, bestdocsnetwork.com, and click on Forest Park. That's right, and don't forget, if you have a question or comment, we want to hear from you. Send us an email at info at bestdocsnetwork.com. That'll do it. So long, everyone. We will see you next week.